Sadly, as the winter season comes to an end, it's time to pack up and leave Crystal River and head north. But before we begin with this week's episode, we need to hang the magnets from our last week's adventure. Cedar Lakes Woods Botanical Garden. And Devil's Den in Williston, Florida. Man, what a great time. If you want to see the video, I'll link it at the end of this one. And now for a channel first. We have our first fans of the channel meet up. Here goes Bob and Angie, however the wind blows. Bye. Thanks for shopping. That's us, soon to be towing a Jeep. Oh, he's got a truck horn. We're jealous. Bye. Over and out. Good luck in Alaska. Hi, everybody. Hey, guys. We just had a great experience. We had our first friend of the channel reach out to us and we just spent the afternoon with them chatting. They too have an Evil Cap 1165, so we were sharing ideas and spent some time with them. It was great. Yeah, they actually have the Top King, which is the old school style of, of this Chevy truck. So it's, uh, it, they have, you know, the Chevy, there's a GMC Top King and then a Chevy, I can't even think of it now, but yeah, it's, it's a 2007, but that thing, telling you that thing is in beautiful beautiful shape absolutely beautiful shape and uh yeah i'm actually jealous because he doesn't have to use death <laughs> make our way to Tallahassee for an overnight stop and then on to Murphy, North Carolina. Don't you know it, after a couple hours drive we pull over for a bathroom break and yeah, something, something got wedged in the slide as I was opening it. Here's the culprit. On our travels north, we take a detour into Tallahassee so that I can get an adjustment. It's well needed after our time in Devil's Den. We live in Tallahassee. This is for you. So, as you know, we're driving through Tallahassee, and don't you know we come up on a bridge that says 13 feet, and we think, Bob thinks we're about 13 too. So, the bridge was at an angle. I'm sorry I didn't record it. So he scooted all the way over to the left shoulder. It seemed to be the highest part of the bridge, and we went under beautifully no problem. So we're assuming that the lowest point of the bridge, which was all the way to the right, was probably 13 feet. Yeah, it definitely looked high enough uh, for me to go under it. But I mean, I put my four ways on and got, and there was no cars parked on the side. So I just, I went through all the parking lanes and uh, we had we had plenty of, plenty of room. But yeah, Angie's right. It's, uh, it had it been 13 feet on the side, but they didn't have an arrow with that. So yeah. uh, normally like Jersey, if you're ever traveling through New Jersey on the turnpike, the bridges are on a slant, the roads are on the slant, and they'll have two different two different uh, signs. And the right side will have like 12-6, 
and the, the, the passing lane will have like 14 too. So that's something to keep in mind when you're on the turnpike in Jersey. Driving past this park in Sylvester, Georgia triggered an awesome memory for me. Having spent a portion of my childhood in Georgia, it took me back to family reunions held at this park. And now we spend a night at a rest area near Macon, Georgia. It was quite peaceful. So last year, a dear friend of ours at the campground nursed my plants back to health and now we're transporting them back up to New York where they'll stay while we go to Alaska. But yeah, so this is what we do. We put them in a box in the tub and they seem to ride okay. Keeping them out of the tub for showers and then putting them back, but the box helps. Let me know what your thoughts are on plants in a truck camper. Put it in the comments. The joys of driving through Atlanta. Now to drive under a parking lot, literally. This town was a huge gold mining town during the gold rush era and a stamp mill broke up the rocks in order for the miners to excrete the precious metals. Well, we attempted to drive through the town, but little did we know as major construction in the town center, which did not allow us to continue on. So we basically just drove around the block, but at least we have an idea now of what the town is like. If we plan a future trip, we'll have to leave the camper at the campground and just bring the Jeep. With the construction we encountered in Dallanaga, Georgia, we had no idea the mountainous, twisty, turny roads we would have to travel with the big rig, but she handled it well. Incredible. Traffic circles don't only exist in cities. We'll be staying a couple of days here. We want to do a little bit of sightseeing in the area. In our next episode, we'll be checking out the town of Helen, Georgia.
So Bob and I are in outside of Murphy, North Carolina, and we're staying at River's Edge RV Park. They have back-end sites along the river, as well as pull, regular pull-through sites, and then super pull-through sites. So just about any size rig they can accommodate. Absolutely beautiful, the foothills of the mountains. It's gorgeous. And we just ate at Chevelle 66 in Murphy. Great food, we recommend it. Great atmosphere as well. So let's see what Bob's up to. He's doing some repairs on the rig. Um, as you know, he's got all his tools with him to, to accomplish most anything. <laughs> so what you working on, babe? <laughs> Your chain's broke again, right? Yep. This is the second time? Yep. Yeah, so you're fixing it. We just stopped at uh, Harbor Freight and picked up. Turn buckles. Heavier duty ones. Sweet. So this is our setup, the blue ox, as you know, to pull the uh, Jeep. Yeah, there's always something. Yeah, it's always something is right. It never fails. It's crazy. I don't even know how that thing pulled out up there. But it did. So he's swapping both out. Where's the link broken? Pulled it right out. Wow. It's going to show how much torque is on these things, you know? Yeah. So these are the back end sites along the Notley River. And this is just an arm off the river. The river is huge. If you Google it, amazing. This is beautiful. Look at the birds. Do you have a road here and an overpass or a bridge? But it's not too noisy. Not too bad. Where we are, it's pretty quiet. I finished my walk. Let's see where Bob is. While Bob continues to work on the hitch, I get the opportunity to interview Gary, the owner of the campground. So you said you opened your campground in 2007? We broke ground in 2007. There's 14 and a half acres. Uh, we own to the center of the Notley River, but I'd call it a Notley Mountain Stream. But there is good trout in there. Oh. And they do stock it a mile up back up the road. Mm -hmm. You'll see a lot of people on kayaks going down through there, and that'll end up in, in Murphy eventually. Wow. But it's about a four hour trip. Wow. And you go into Lake Notley and, and then on across, you know. So this is called Notley River? Notley River, and there's Lake Notley five miles away. It's there's huge. There's a big dam there. Yeah. There's about, I think, 12 or 14 dams up in this area. Did you ever watch The Fugitive? Yes. The, the dam that he jumped off of is over uh, uh, about uh, 22 miles from here. Wow. That's where they made that. Of course, they made it. Pay attention! Get out on your knees! Fight now! They made a lot of movies up in this area, including uh, uh, what's that one with Listen for the Canoes and the Banjos? And stuff. Oh, yeah, that was here too. <laughs> yeah, that was made up here too, around here. The this area is very secluded. So not a lot of people travel much up here. Most of the people who are born here or raised here, they stay here. Oh. And um, I'm what they call a halfback. I'm halfway back to Ohio. Oh, okay. So, uh, later in life, it's a halfback. Gotcha. So, there's an actual. Uh, they call it an arts and craft college here. Really? You can go shear a sheep. You can learn how to shoe a horse. Oh, you can make a horseshoe. And there's a list of college courses that they teach. Incredible. From making knives to 
Wilton quilts that how to spin yarn and stuff like that. that wow. You can actually shear a sheep, spin the yarn, and make a sweater. Oh my gosh, and, and that's they charge great. them classes, but they have a they have a pretty good attendance of people from all over the United States come to this area to take one of these three, four, five, six week classes. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of them come here and stay. It's about uh, 12 miles from here. That's one of the main attractions in this area. You have uh, Fields of the Woods, which is located about 10 miles from here. And it's actually a religious uh, piece of ground where they've got the Ten Commandments on one side of the mountains, and on the other side is a tabernacle and a temple. Wow. And it was actually a, uh, call it a Bible school for ministers. <laughs> but even if you just rode out there and drove into it, big white curly gates and see the stuff written on the side of the mountains and stuff, that's probably the second most attractive thing in the area to see. Wow. Other than that, we have a casino in Walmart. <laughs> you have a casino? I didn't notice that. Five and a half miles from the brand new Cherokee casino. Wow. Oh, no, no kidding. <laughs> well, we went to Chevelle 66. Your daughter recommended it. It was very good. She did good. Yeah, she it did was excellent. Chevelle 66 in Hayesville. My buddy Larry, Larry owns it. Very mm -hmm. nice guy. He's what's actually. Name, what's the name of the town there in Georgia? Duluth, 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 Duluth. Delonica. Is that what it is? Delonica. Delonica. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah Delonica. Delonica. A lot of a. Uh, NASCAR racers from oh, okay. this area, you know. Yeah, we tried to sneak in there and just do a drive through, but their center circle there is under construction, so we got caught with the big rig and had to do the windy back roads to get here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was Georgia. It was Georgia just over the border, and then, boy, then because I had to go around the town because I couldn't get through it, I wound up in a parking lot, so I kind of got through that. Then we wound up on all kinds of windy roads. Go through the Nanahela Gorge and you go through the Ocoee Gorge, and that's where whitewater rafting takes place. In the summertime, you can go through that gorge and you can probably see 30 to 70 rafts in there with eight to 10 people in it doing the whitewater rafting here. That's the wow. other big thing around here. Yeah. That and the zip lines through the mountains and stuff. You know, like. Gary is a wealth of knowledge. If you're ever in the area, you should stop by and chat with him. Now it's time to finish setting up camp for the night. <laughs> oh, don't you know it? Look closely. Can you see what the issue is? <laughs> Bob just went to close the door. And he put the door outside the rail. <laughs> and as we come to the close of another episode, please like and subscribe. And as always, have a great day. And God bless. What would I do without you? That's what happens when uh, guys want to chat. <laughs>